Hey everyone, welcome to Geek Syndicate. I'm Barry Nugent and this is a bit of a strange Geek Syndicate. So what we want to do is basically give you a bit of a sneak behind the curtain that is GS. Um, so when Dave came up with the idea of GS, the reason that he came up with it was basically we'd kind of lost touch as friends uh, when I moved to Northampton. And um, we used to talk maybe once or twice a year and we used to have these mammoth kind of hour to hour conversations. And obviously this is going back, you know, 13 years now, 13, 14 years. And around that same time, Dave was listening to podcasts, um, primarily Comic Geek Speak. And that was when he suggested the idea of basically taking our random nonsense phone calls and um, turning them into a podcast. And now here we are, uh, 12 years later, uh, <laughs> where we were doing the same thing again. We'd sort of lost touch a little bit over the last sort of six months. Both of us incredibly busy with just just life, really, you know. Um, and obviously we hadn't put out an episode, as you would have gathered, in about five months before last week's episode. But what you don't know is that Dave and I hadn't actually spoken in that time. We'd, we'd had one conversation really in that time that wasn't the occasional text here or there. Uh, and as it turned out, um, I'd had an app on my phone to record phone calls because it was something I wanted to try out with Dave at some stage. And I'd forgotten the app was on and it recorded the entire phone call. Um, so I thought actually it was a nice way to kind of go back to the beginning really because this is kind of um, what started Geek Syndicate in the first place. I've done some light editing to it, not really that much, not not like I would to a normal episode. Dave is obviously aware of it now. <laughs> so uh, here it is for your listening pleasure. Uh, this is uh, Geek Syndicate Unplugged. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I did. Oh, cool. What's up? Yeah, cool. Quick one. Yeah. How, how far into BPRD are you? How many trains are you in? Um, I don't know, because I said I bought I bought a shed load the other day because the deal is 50% off at the moment. Um, is it? I've read, I think, I think I'm up to like number five, maybe. I don't know. I, I just I just looked at my, because I was thinking about it, because I was thinking I remember back in the day I was proper into it. Yeah. I just checked my shelf. I've got the first six trades on my shelf. Oh damn! <laughs> and I think I think I've read most of them. I can't remember now, but I remember things. I just remember. I remember trying to get her up to read more because it was like the War of Frogs was coming up or something, and it was. Yes, yes, yeah, Plague of Frogs. Well, the, the thing is, is like so. There's the big thing that they've just finished is Hell on Earth. I think that's the yeah. big, which has been going for like time, and I've read a few around then. And there's a and it all kept saying yeah it all kicked off with Plague of the Frogs and this thing called Black Flame or whatever, and um, I was like you know what I actually want to find out about this so I went back to look through the volumes to find out where it all kicked off and that's where I started getting the volumes from like last week, um, right? And I I think the Plague of the Frogs comes within that it definitely comes within that that six those six volumes. Right, right, okay. Because I don't. I just, remember, I just remember going. I, I don't know if I finished it now. I can't remember, but I just remember thinking, "This is this is deep, man." The whole the whole first bit of it that I could see was is about ten volumes. Right, okay. So I might I might I might get a few more then. Um, I just I just remember it was one of those things. I'm reading it, going, "How how is anyone getting out of this?" Yeah, but do you know? <laughs> I sat, because it was over Christmas, so we just weren't sitting with the TV, we were sitting in the other room, and I was just reading comics or whatever. Give me one second, sweetheart. Um, yeah. And I just, I just, I, I just ploughed through it. Yeah, I'll, I might start reading again from the beginning, because I can't, it's been so long, but I can't remember. Well, I, the, the other thing I wanted to do, because like, you know, Mark Lennon is like, he's, he's done with Hellboy now, and I was thinking, maybe yeah. I could do the whole Hellboy thing, but I'm like, that just, seems, that just seems mammoth. For do, do you know what, when I was looking to see what I was going to buy, because I was like 50% off, and we get a few of the Dark Horse stuff, I hadn't, re I generally hadn't realised just how many comics there are from the Mignola universe that's Hellboy and Because then you got the Abe Sapien stuff, and then you got the um, 
you've got the Love to Johnson stuff, which is what I was reading as well. Yeah, I remember that. And then there's and there's others as well that have just kind of kicked off, that just like spun out of it and just made this. And the problem is, as far as I can tell, they all look good. Do you know what I realised towards the end of this year it was like when I was picking up that stuff, and I'll tell you about everyone really quickly, is that um, there's enough there, like from it is literally like the equivalent of a DC or a Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You you could you could literally just spend your money on that and be you could get lost in that and then come out of it and go yeah DC. What was I reading? Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. The other company for someone like me. Um, that, who loves pulp that I hadn't completely off my radar is Dynamite. Right, right. Yeah, Dynamite. Yeah, I've, I've never, I've, I've never, I've, they've got some beautiful covers, man. Man, it's, it's Korean pulp at you, but I've never really got into it. Man, I picked up one. Someone, it was a Doc Savage one, um, and I actually reviewed it for the site. It was like I was literally ready. I was like, that's AD Doc Savage, and then the bloke who wrote it replied to me on Twitter, and he said, "Ah, oh, you might want to check out. I did a Shadow and Twilight Zone crossover." And I was like, what like so? I've seen those comics. So yeah. I was looking at the sales. Like, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, but because he's that, because I really liked his writing, I'm like, oh, I'll give it a go, mate. It, it was, it was beautiful. It was, it was like, it was beautiful. And suddenly, it gave a whole love of. I always liked the shadow, but whenever I've tried to read him in comics, he just hasn't really worked for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, it works now. And now I'm reading the Garth Ennis one from Dynamite. Um, first opening. Page, uh, you, and you know, you know Garth. When Garth hits it, he hits it proper. First opening. I always say this one bit where like he's got all the he's got all these villains there, and you've got the shadows there, and he's basically like, you lot are all underlings. You get one chance. Walk away. Go back to your lives, right? And there's like 15 men there, and then one guy like drops his shotgun. Just one guy just drops his shotgun. <laughs> puts his hands up, right? And the other guy, and one of the other guys goes, it's only one guy. And the next panel, he gets shot in the head. And the next minute, he just lets loose of all these two guns. And it just leaves the one um, the one guy there who drops his gun. And the shadow's like, go back to your life. And he says the guy's name. I can't remember. He's like, go back to your life. Go back to your life, Bob Kidney. Look after your family. Feed them well. Done. <laughs> and then never, you'd never stray again, would you? And the next shot, my boy, chipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love oh, that you man. get one, you get one chance. Put your, you know, you just feel like if I'm in that situation, you just think there's twenty of us. There's one dude there, but he's got that level of confidence. You, you know what? The minute, the minute he says that, I'm done. I'm you done. I mean? I'm done. Be, that's the same thing I thought when we watched the first episode of um, uh, what's the martial arts thing we were watching? Uh, oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. Episode, man standing there. He, he left his weapon at the motorbike. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, he, and he's still not looking worried. That, that tells me a whole story, right? Also, there. you have to look at the way the man's dressed compared to the way, the man, the way you're dressed. My boy's dressed for a battle. Yeah. You've got, yeah, rag, yeah. you got some rags on, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Nah. My, my, boy's, my boy's well fed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that his first start? You know? I, don't know when that, I don't know when that comes back, you know. I was thinking about it the other day. Because it, it was a mid-season break, wasn't it? That yeah. Was thing, and they, they didn't say, there's no, I, I haven't seen anything about. Are you, it. are you up to date on it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, that, that brother, he's like the new sort of villain. Yeah. My boy's got some skills, man. He has, and he don't look it. No, he he, he's, he's a bit chunky as well, but my boy's yeah, got. And it's, and it's like, you know, he lets other people do his work until he has to do his work. Well, yeah. there, was, there was a piece, it was a similar thing. There was a piece where, like, one of these boys was giving him a rock. He was saying, like, you know, you've promised us, you've promised us this, that, and the other, and there's nothing here. And he was like, all right, you three, pick up weapons. You know what I mean? He's like, I'm going to show you that I have faith in whatever my good is, blah, blah, blah. And he blindfolds himself. Is that that scene? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get messed up, man. I'm telling you, I'm but there's, telling some, you. there's some flight in that season, man. With the, the young uh, dude with the two blades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's, really, it's funny because the first time you see him, he just looks like a bit. He looks a bit. Yeah. Do a flop, and then he just works, man. Could you have a fight with like a Chinese dude? Um, it's when they come to kill like Pilgrim. That's his name. They come to yeah. kill um Pilgrim and the widow. I tell you what, uh, life is cheap in that world, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, you don't last long in that world if you ain't got skills, man. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, what was I watching? We were watching something. I don't know what it was. I was watching one of them things where you go, it just never pays to work for a villain. Yeah, the more I watch a thing, I always always had that belief anyway. But the more times I watch things, oh, you know what it is? We watched we watched um, we watched Attack the Block. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like, Chris Vaughan always said, no, I don't think it's for me. And we were sitting there, and I, I said, I really fancy watching it. She went, all right. And she loved it. Yeah, she liked it. And, and, and John Boyega just cut. You know, I mean, you look at that and go, my boy is ready to hit the yeah. big time, man. Yeah. And um, there's a bit where, and it turns out, you know, I did that, um, t, you know, I did that um, short film recently where I was, uh, I was dressed as uh, the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I worked with the girl in Doctor Who, the archaeologist girl. Ah, oh, okay, okay. And in that, there's also a guy as a security guard. And I'm looking, I'm looking at it. I'm watching the tag the block going. Oh, well, this bloke looks familiar. You know, hi hats. I think he's the um, the dealer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, in, his lieutenant is this kind of big, beefy, kind of overweight black dude. Yeah. Um, I worked with him in the same in in the same short film. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's just a bit where like they go, what's that? And he goes, oh, I don't know. I had to something over there. He goes, go and look. Goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, go and look. And I'm like, wait, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't pay me enough for this. Yeah, you, know, you, you have to shoot me in the back because <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather take a shot than like be like torn to pieces by whatever that is. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, I've watched it. I've been, I've got quite obsessed now. Hey, listen to. Um, what I consider watching alternative news on um, YouTube, where basically I've been watching things where people just lose, you know, the rant videos or whatever. Yeah. But I've been looking, I've been watching a few where. It's been, I was, was going to ask you how you discovered that dude who was ranting about. Well, yeah, it's, it's, right. he, he was just a random one that time, but it's like I found like a, um, I don't know how old she is, she looks like she could be 20s or whatever, who she absolutely hates. Um, the new Star Wars, like the last Jedi, and um, yeah, yeah. you know, and she's coming from that point of view of like she did this whole video on like how Ray isn't the the strong female, you know, isn't the you know the strong female character that she's supposed to be, and blah blah blah. And, Ooh, and, interesting. And, and actually, you know, Leia was, and these are the reasons why. And we lays it out, um, and this whole thing of like that the last Jedi and the Force Awakens are such progressive films. And she was kind of going, but how is that, pro- you know, how is this progressive? You're saying, oh, yeah, but you've got John Berger in it. So, yes, yeah, so you've got one, you've got one black guy in it. Congratulations. You had one black guy in it before, and then and that one black guy in it before. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but people go, oh, look how many people are in the background. I'm like, yeah. And I, I, always come, I always come back to what we've always said, you know, it doesn't matter how many you've got in the background. I mean, that's not a bad sign. Yeah. That's not a bad sign. But the question is, who's leading the narrative? Always yeah. ask that. If you can't answer that question to my satisfaction, it doesn't matter how many you've got in the background. And I've, I've listened to quite a few reviews of it now. Of the last, I find it quite interesting because it's, it's such a split view on it. I've been, it's quite interesting listening to different points of view. Um, and everyone keeps saying, yeah, you know, the thing is, I really like the Ray and the Luke story, and I'm, you know, and I just found whenever it was the other lot, I just wanted to get back to the, because that's the story that I'm interested in. I'm like, exactly. Because, exactly. Because of the way they've done, because of the way they've written um, Poe and um, Finn, the way they've used those characters, you're just not, you're not interested in their journey. I wasn't interested in their journey. I was more interested in the Ray stuff, but that was because that's how it was written. Yeah, 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 exactly. Whereas, and someone was saying, yeah, but it was always like, no, it wasn't. Because when I watched Empire Strikes Back, I was more, I was just interested in what was going on with Han and Leia than what was going on with Luke and the Elder. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I've, seen, absolutely. I've seen it now about three times, three, four times. And yeah, I have to say, a lot of the, a lot of the criticism, I'm kind of like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Uh, I also thought it was interesting was that that, that uh, black dude talking about how people you know call him a coon because of his opinion. And it just reminded me of that dude who called us like who yeah. called us Blue Cups kind or whatever. Something like that. Yeah. Well, that's like, so we're, well, it's gonna happen. That's the problem. Yeah, I mean, is you can't. And some of the videos that he does, that guy, he's got a lot to say. Just, you know, I don't agree with everything that he says, but a lot of the stuff that he has he has said about diversity and things like that. Um, I I kind of I'm like yeah I'm I'm there with you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Um, and I just 
love the fact that he, that whole point of I think he I think it's because he was dropping blade as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the, that, that was it. It was, it was another video. I'll send the link. And basically, this guy destruct. He was doing the deconstruction of like the female character and genre stuff. And he was saying about how we've actually gone back. We haven't actually gone <laughs> forward. I had this, you know, I I got into this conversation with somebody, and they were younger. They were younger. Yeah. So I'll give them it. Yeah, they were going, oh, it's about time. And I went, well, it's not really, though, is it? Because we've had it before. Oh, one or two. And I went, let me give you a list. Yeah. Yeah. I said, when I was in, back in the 80s, yeah, and even in the 70s, man, when we get Pam Grey doing her yeah. thing, you know, and there, was, there was not plenty compared to your white male, but yeah. it was up and coming. And then we hit the 80s, suddenly started this journey backwards. Yeah. And also, but don't well, tell me, don't tell me it's like a new thing. Also, as well, this idea of like, you know, I hate the term, I hate the term, but the term, you know, this long female character and blah, blah, blah. I would argue that it was handled far better in them films because actually they were well rounded characters. After the right, video, because yeah. he was talking about Ripley and he was saying, like, for pretty much a good chunk of aliens, she didn't want to be there, she was scared of the aliens, but the yeah. minute, the minute she kicked off, and then reason she went was because they said, look, we're going to keep you well out of harm's way. You know what I mean? And mm. only when shit kicked off, she had to get involved. She, she had to involved. stand up. She, she had to stand up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he was saying about the but one... That, and that's the thing. You can't create a strong character because you're creating a, you're just creating a caricature that way. You've got to create a well-rounded character exactly. that finds strengths. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, where they, that's where the term is wrong. The term should yeah. be a well-rounded character, and it doesn't matter if that character is a villain, or I wrote, one of the characters I wrote in um, in Forgotten Warriors when I was kind of doing the Cabal and stuff, and I wrote, Andrea is her name, and um, she's quite a weaselly character. She's quite a weak, she, she's perceived to be quite a weak character. Um, mm. But that's what I wanted, because actually, you can, it's okay to have weak and cowardly Characters who also happen to be women. Yeah, well then, that's, that's not in, it's interesting then, isn't it? Yeah, it's interesting, but it's, it's just that same... I think people confuse, like, Ripley and Sarah Con- Sarah Connor's the best one, I feel. Um, as Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, where, that's I mean, where the term comes from. She, she, she spent half the Terminator film running away, screaming and being protected by a man. Yeah. But it was her character development that made her... Amazing. Yeah, and by the end of that film, she was the one who killed the Terminator. Well, she'd had a journey. She had yeah, a journey. Had a journey. And that's what you that's what you want to see. And that's why that last that last scene where she's kinda of in the Jeep and she, I always forget she's in the Jeep and she's got the dog and she's got the gun in the seat next to her. That's before you see all the badass stuff in Terminator Two. That was enough for me to sort of go, Okay, well, I've got a journey. She, you, know like, I mean? you know, you look at the women in Black Panther, yeah. Now they're strong. But yeah. they're strong because everyone's strong. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know that's, I mean? that's the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? So they, they can be because that's that's how they were brought up to be, full stop. But also it's not, and I think that's the, the problem with a lot of stuff now is it's, they, they don't make a thing of it. That's just the status quo of their world. Yeah. So, yeah. so the fact that they're his like, bodyguards and stuff, that you don't have anyone dropping a line where, well, you know, we treat women the same way we treat men in Wakanda. That's why women are. You don't need that line. It's there. It's just that's just the way it is. It, it's just it's just the way it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's I mean that's the thing I like. See, I was, I, think I was thinking about a while back. I was thinking about other comic lines that are superheroes and what, what. And I was thinking about Valiant Universe. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I haven't really cracked at all. But the only thing I've read is a comic with the woman called Faith. Oh yeah, I think I've read I've read one issue. It was kind of like a bit overweight. Yeah. Um, and my thing is, like, if, you know what I mean? If the superhero gene is handed out randomly, why is it always handed out to fit people? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, but the thing is, they handle her brilliantly as a character. She's brilliant. She makes mistakes, all the rest of it. And um, they don't make nothing of her way. It's just the way she is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just standard. People are different weights. And yeah. It's just dealt with. And I was like, well, you know, and I like that. It wasn't like a clarion call to overweight people. And you know what, right? The more I think about The Last Jedi, the more times I've watched it, the more I struggle with Ray from the, from the point of view of like, I don't want to be that kind of angry Star Wars fan, but it's like, 
Where, where do these skills coming from? I, did, I said this the day, I said this the day, the day I got out of the film. I was like, how come, how come she can do everything like straight off? The thing was, in, in Force Awakens, people said that, and I was willing to allow certain things, and I could. I, in oh, no, 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 it's, it's Force Awakens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people did, and I could make certain. Hi. Um, I don't. Know, so. I, I, I read a book which was a prequel, and it showed basically one of the things it said was like in her spare time, basically she had to spend thousands of hours on flight simulators and the rest yeah. of it. But, so I was like, okay, all right, I can see that. I can see. But that. As some people said this as well. For a lot of people, their own experience of her is going to be the film. Yeah. So you shouldn't have to have to go to like a book or a comic to get that bit of information. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. Just, yeah. Um, but for so, me, oh, give me a second, B. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, all right, all right. I lost all of that because there was so much. I've got to I've got to I'm trying to pretend to tell you some stuff. Yeah, I told I told him. Yeah, go on. <laughs> um yeah, I could I could make allowances for it in, in Force Awakens. Because I remember you saying it to you when we reviewed it. But like mm. for me, the second we watched The Last Jedi, when I thought you know you know she has a big fight scene at the end with the two of them yeah. up, right? First time I watched it, I was like, yeah, that was a bad fight scene. Second time, I'm like, hold up a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. These guys have been like, these Training. guys are fully trained up to protect Snoke, who's, who's like the level of the Emperor, right? And you just come in, you don't even have, you literally had no training with a lightsaber whatsoever. None. I know people have said, yeah, but really, when you look at the timeline, Luke was only on Dagobah three. I still feel more training that she had. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Basically, you're telling me she's the greatest Jedi ever. And, and, and that's where I... I would, have, I would have no problem with it if she was at, if she was with Luke and Luke was like, you know what, yeah, okay, I'm going to train you. And then you get a little montage of him training her. That's fine. But it's just, it was just... It made, it made no sense to me because in my head, they, they should have rinsed her. <laughs> it should have been, and even it even showed it even showed my boy Kylo was struggling. Yeah, that that made it make no, that make no sense to me. My boy no. been trained by Luke Skywalker for years. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a downside now. It's a downside of having things like DVDs and Netflix and things like that, so you can rewatch things countless times. So I think. When, you, when we were kids, you watch something once, you maybe get to watch it again, maybe five years later. Yeah, exactly, exactly, when it came out. Can you imagine that? I remember that? Yeah, I know. You watch it, and you'd have to wait years to see yeah. it again. And I think that's the problem. There was, no, there was no YouTube then to see little clips. Or exactly. You, you can re-watch and re-watch things to the nth degree, so you don't get that one-off experience anymore. And I think that's part of the part of the problem. And you throw in like the internet and everyone can talk about everything to the nth degree, that just makes it Mm, yeah, that's where we are now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But no, as, as I have to say, as time's gone by, I've been even less. Uh, it just it sits less well with me as time's gone by. What the last last Jedi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still a lot about it that I like, and I don't yeah. have I don't have as much of a problem that people have with what they did with Luke Skywalker. I still kind of. I still stand by the reason why I like that. That you know, I mean, a man can change in 30 years and all that. So I don't necessarily have a problem with that. But for me, it's just. And the more times I watch it, the more actually I do think it's quite similarly structured to Empire Strikes Back, even though people are saying it's such an original film. I don't think it's as original as you think it is. No, no, I don't. I never thought it was that original. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, I did like the idea of that kind of space scene. You know, it's, it's, you can't follow it down to, you know, with the spaceships chasing each other and and like keep not being able to gain on each other and, you know, what do we do, time is ticking. And I really like that. It doesn't, you can't follow it down too much because it doesn't really make too much sense. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was a nice, it was a nice little effect of the plot and all of it. I, I think my, my, one of my biggest um, 
I ain't been too fucked too much about the whole kind of what they did with Poe and all that. I ain't too bothered about that. My biggest thing is I, I just thought they completely wasted. Finn's just become so far down the pecking order compared no, to trust, trust, trust. Uh, but, but, mate, I think, I'll just. It's one of the things. That I, <laughs> There's things I go, oh, that's not great. And there's things that just vex me. And the more I think about it, the more vexed I get. Yeah. Because it's just, A, A, that's not what you promised me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You promised me to, <laughs> to use the word, two diverse people leading the narrative. And then you just chuck one of them away. Yeah. Totally chucked them away. You can't tell me different. Ah, oh, but it taught us a valuable lesson about failure and the need to block it. Shut up. <laughs> It's just, yeah, not buying it. Well, they kind of started off. With it was, it was a sideline. It was a side plot, which yeah. added nothing, which changed nothing. Yeah, not a thing. Yeah, in my mind, that's in my mind. It's a, uh, if you're playing the game, it's like a side. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's a side quest in the game. Yeah, yeah. And it's always like, oh, did you do the side quest in Assassin's Creed? No, I couldn't be asked, mate. I just stuck to the main game. <laughs> Do you know what? If if we didn't have films and Star Wars was a game, that's exactly what that would be. That's exactly yeah. what that would be. Yeah, nonsense. I'm not buying it. Oh uh, yeah. So I think otherwise. Yeah, I'm just in recovery, mate. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm just kind of getting. You know, I've been kind of ill for the last few days since. So New Year's Day was my first day off, first day done. From the panel? Uh, yeah, and I was I spent half of that in bed. Yeah. And then the day after, I was coughing, but I managed to go out. And then I took Alana to see Spider-Man yesterday. How, how, how was that? Uh, I, I wish I'd gone to see it the day it had come out. Oh, really? Yeah. For what, what reason? Overhyped or...? Overhyped? It's, it's not overhyped. It's everything they said. Okay. But the impact was lessened because I go in there going, well, it's going to be the best thing ever. And it pretty much was, but you kind of think, kind of think, where's the best thing ever? Because everyone's told you it's the best thing ever. Okay, yeah, I get you. you know? and, it, and, and no one's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's... And I think if I'd gone to see it the first day, I'd have... I'd, I would have been the one. I would have been the one annoying everyone. You know yeah. Because <laughs> it, it's it's amazing. It's yeah. really it's really really good. I get real but tired. I, to, I said to I said to a few people like, yeah, no, it sounds really good, man. I'll probably check it out. It comes out or whatever. No, you gotta go and see it in the cinema. No, you gotta go. And the thing is, no. you know, and I'm glad. To be fair, I'm glad I saw it in the cinema. But I kind of wish, I wish, I wish I could have gone in a year's time to see it in the cinema. Right, when all, all the hype is just, it's just a film. Yeah, and I forgot yeah. what everyone said about it. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it is a great film. And, <laughs> and to me, you know, what, you know what someone said to me? And they said, you know, you know I went to watch it. And they said, that's a comic book movie. Cause it just made me realise that all those other Marvel movies, they're just Westerns, really, with superheroes in. <laughs> 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 but it's it's great plot. It's great characterization. There's something happens right at the beginning I didn't see coming because I didn't know. Right. And that, and that shaped it all. Um, it was funny. Um, but it was. Do you know what? It was far more complex and character driven than I thought it was going to be. Okay. So I was, yeah. It was, and the character journeys were great as well. I tell you what. Something that wasn't that we watched over Christmas. Cause we watched it. We've got Sky. We had Sky Cinema just for Christmas. Um, <laughs> They watched a film called, it's called The Hurricane Heist. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? It is literally Die Hard beats Twister. <laughs> what did we watch that was practically Die Hard meets, um, oh, it was Die Hard meets Tower and Inferno? Oh, Skyscraper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is better than Skyscraper. Well, Hurricane Heist. Yeah, because it, it, I mean, Die Hard meets Twister. You know what? I sat, we sat down to watch it, and I thought it still was going to be awful. And by the end of it, was, and I was a bit tired. And it was yeah. like, at one point, something happened when it said something like, "Yeah, he used to be, he was ex, ex special force or something." And she was like, "Shall I, shall I pause it so we can watch it tomorrow?" I was like, "Yeah," because I need to be happy. Because <laughs> I was like, "This is going to be a film. I need to watch this properly." You know what I, mean? I love it. Everyone's ex special forces. Yeah. Like, 
Fame was actually left in the special force. But it was yeah. a really, it was a really clever film because one of the main sort of heroes is he's like one of them storm chaser guys. He knows all about tornadoes and stuff like that. And he used like all his science skills like against the, the sort of terrorist guys, like the criminals. Nice. It, nah, Phil, Phil was bomb. I and mean, it's actually well, well, pretty decent. And so yeah, it, it was, and it, and it was ninety minutes. And right now. For me, when I see a film pop up that says 90 minutes or 93 minutes. Absolutely. Even if the film sounds like it's going to be shit, I'm like, you know what, I'll give that a go. But do you know what? Because it's like two things I'm done with, man. It's films over two hours yeah. and films and TV shows with 26 episodes or whatever it is. Yeah. Certain, certain um, films don't need to be two hours, 40 minutes. No, I mean, Spider-Man was longer than I imagined it was going to be. Right. Uh, and usually I say most films I've seen could lose 20 minutes. Spider-Man could lose 10 minutes, but, you know, that's it. Yeah. And, and, the, and the post-credit scene was was brilliant. Okay. The post-credit scene was so good. <coughs> As I was going in, the woman the woman collected the tickets was like, yeah, make sure you see the post-credit scene. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Actually, maybe the 10 minutes it could have lost was the credits, actually, because it's just, <laughs> just names, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just names, isn't it? Uh, but what I, what I loved about skyscrapers right at the end in the helicopter was the dude who was like, you know, the rich dude who owned the building. Yeah. And uh, and the rock says to him, so what now? And he goes, now we've been building. And I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Straight out of the other rock film. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, because that, that, yeah. I was about to say to you, though, he said that he said, okay. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that. I was like, ah, I see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. It was... I, it, it, Hey? I was going to say, it, I mean, it was all right, but it was no tearing to say that. No, well, I said to Siobhan after, watching this, yeah, I enjoyed it, but the fire didn't do that. The fire had nothing to do with it, really. No. It just gave him a time limit. Yeah. But I was like, no, I said, um, uh, I said, uh, I said to Siobhan after, watching this made me realise what a masterpiece Tower Inferno was. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll better go. It's lunchtime. It's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likewise, I'll better go. Yeah. All right, uh, You still, still good for this week? Yeah, yes, in the diary, man. Cool, cool. All right, man. All right. All right. See ya.